Hey YouTube. So some of the white oak that was in the kiln is down to around 15%, which for outside stuff, 15% is good because around here in PA, we're, we're at around 19% ambient moisture outside. So this the moisture content of the wood is around 19, somewhere between 15 and 19, but um, 19 is gonna be good for what we're doing. So my grandson came up and um, what he's got going here is they want to build a catapult and um, for a school project. So I got the wood, you can have it for free, and um, we're working on that now. So he's doing some measuring there so that we can get the, uh, the lapping of the 4x4 so to end up even on the edges. We're going to make a 3 foot by 7 foot long, and this catapult's going to be heavy. The actual, what, what, what dimensions were you guys allowed to go to? Uh, three meters by three meters and two meters tall. So you're looking at three yards by three yards is huge. We ain't going nowhere near that. We'd never be able to carry it. And uh, two meters tall. So we're going to go with the six foot tall, but we're hoping that this seven foot is going to long, you know, this direction. is going to stabilize a six foot high catapult beam. So I'll get back to you on how we're making out with this thing. So in order to make these, uh, put these 4x4s together, <clears throat> we're just going to use a common sort of shiplap joint. So you can see that this, this board here would be the 3 foot wide. He's marking the other ends. So I've already cut this and uh, the way I'm making these joints is we just mark off the waist part and then cut a series of lines through there and then you just break these off with a hammer and then use a wood chisel to take care of the rest of it. This is white oak, this stuff is really tough. But um, that's what I had in the kiln and what it actually is, is it was, I it, there's some warpage in the 4x4s. What I'm using them for is, um, I was using them for weight in the kiln to hold the other boards down. So, yeah, that's, we'll be doing the same thing on the bottom there. So like I say, it's just a simple lap joint uh, to square that together. I'm not sure how I'm going to hold that together yet. I might use some uh, screws or I may drive some wooden pegs in there. Probably screws. It'll be easier. We're trying to get the framing part done. And uh, this is a really good opportunity for him to learn how to do all kind of little things here. So um, we're going to try to get the frame part done so we can get to the apparatus that throws the, the ball or whatever so that we can test that. The testing part is going to be the part that's hardest. Now this is for a physics class. So if the guy, if the kids, you know, use physics properly, and you, know, you hear, you will always hear me in my videos about math, they can figure out, do a lot of figuring and predict what this thing's going to do. So we'll see what happens. So here, uh, my grandson is going to start to cut out the lap joint. So, go ahead. You can use the chisel there too. Yeah. Now if you were working with fine wood, you know, you wouldn't want to be prying on that. Yeah. So that's it.
got some boards here I'm gonna mark the wheels off for you to cut out, okay? Yep. So here we're laying out the wheels to a 10 inch circle and then my grandson will cut these out he can we're going to glue them together so the wood goes in two directions the grain pattern so it doesn't break when he's rolling this thing Take a little nut off the back. That's it. So at this point we've got the bolts in and the lap joint. Um, so this is all together, it's squared up pretty good. Now we're going to be putting the uprights in. They're going to be 4x4, four, four four, 6 foot long, and they're in the center of this thing. So I've come down here half an inch. Could probably make a fancier joint than this. I'm not, going to, I'm not into that right now. I don't want to have to do that. So I'm just going to come down a half an inch. We'll clean this out, and then we'll set the 4x4 four four in there, and that'll keep it from moving. We also um, have the uh, wheels. We, we cut the wheels out of pine boards I had here, a 10 inch circle, and we took the grains and turned them perpendicular to one another and glued that together. So it's not like this thing has to go anywhere. They're only probably going to use it for an hour when they're working with it, but that's where we're at so far. So you can see we have the uprights. In, and we're just cleaning up now a little bit. You can go ahead and take it that way. We're going to take the horses out of here to, and we put it on a cart that I use for logs so that we can move it around easy until we get the wheels fixed. Oh, it's pretty big. Okay. So we have the braces for the uprights cut, and he's cutting a pocket in there. To slip the brace into so it doesn't come out. We could nail it or screw it, but I don't really trust that. I think that the, having the brace on here into a pocket would be a lot better. So we're going to call it a day now, and I'll put this video up. Um, we have a brace, and what we did was we uh, sunk the wood into. This other piece, we chunked the brace into the main frame and then put a lag screw in there just to hold it. So, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. So, we should have that, should be a good brace. We're going to put one on the other side here yet, and then one on this side on both sides of the 4x4. Four four. But I'm not doing it today, I am done. So, we'll clean up a little bit here and, and we'll be done for today. Have a good one. Bye.